peep and peepettes, how's it going? Welcome back to yet another episode of Jester Does Retro Games. We are back on StarCraft 1, getting ready to dive into our uh, next campaign uh, uh, challenge here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up where we left off. We we're doing the uh, Terran campaign. We just finished a boot camp, so we're going to dive into Wasteland. It's the first official little uh, part of the series we're going to go into. Exciting, exciting, exciting. Agitator Online. Good evening, Magistrate. Morning. I'll fill you in on what's been happening. Confederate traffic has increased substantially within the system due to the recent protest destruction of the Chow Sao Colony. Oh no. The Confederates have tightened security on all outlying systems, and it's likely that this colony will be locked down as well. An encrypted Confederate transmission came for you while you were at dinner. Replaying transmission. Greetings, Magistrate. I'm General Edmund Duke of the Confederate Security Force with Alpha Squadron. The Confederacy has quarantined this entire planet, and we'll proceed with a lockdown within 48 hours. You're to relocate your core colonists to the outlying wastelands. Now, I know Transmission ended. I have contacted the local marshal, James Raymond. Raymond has agreed to meet your personnel en route and escort them to the new wasteland site. Hot dog. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in here. And we'll uh, see if we can find Rainer and find our barracks or build our barracks and get the Marines taken care of. All right. So if I can remember right here, there's a way to. Is that how you do it? I'll turn you can hold control and click a unit to select multiple units once. That's a good thing to know. Now, if I go to, say, here. Okay, good. So, one of the key things here, you can highlight a group of people here. If you hold down control and hit uh, one of the numbers, one, two, three, and four, and so on, it programs into a group. So, now I can go to number one, for example, for Marines, number two for my SVVs. This is really helpful because if I do all of this, I can do number three for all of them. So, now I can say, okay, everybody can go ahead and. Uh, Push your foot, move around here. But if I need to separate them to kind of save the Marines from getting hurt, I can uh, basically uh, uh, separate them and have them fight and make sure my SCVs get taken care of. Because I don't want to get them killed. That would be that would be horrible. Ooh, wow, 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 woo, woo, <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, parole on here. So we need to find Rainer, and then we're going to be uh, uh, see if we can't uh, get some things built here. Ah, I gotta try to get used to the whole uh, marine thing again. That's gonna be a challenge. Like I said before in the last episode, I'm, I'm much more of a Protoss kind of guy. Here he is! Hey, Rainer! Hey, Heidi Hody. Howdy, boys. I'm Jim Rainer, Marshal of these parts. Marshal of these parts. Marshal of these parts! Ermagerd! <laughs> Woo! So we're going to go ahead and create everybody as a one group. We're going to make you guys a... Uh, we'll call you three group. And we'll make our fighters. Actually, we'll add Rainer to that. There's a way to add to it. There we go. Yeah, so one is my SCVs, two is the fighters, and then three is... Well, three is the thing, and one is the other. Okay. Let's get these guys up front here. I've, I've always been in the mindset to try to... Save everybody however I can. Um, and it's one of those silly things, but this way we can kind of keep everybody as much as possible. We'll head on down here. Here we go. Here's our base. Hey yo, how's it going, guys? You guys get to work. Dive right in there. I'm actually gonna take one of you and have you uh, start on. You know what? Is that enough? Nah. Never mind. Have at it. Have at it, guys. And then we'll have you guys hang out just right around here in case anything happens. In fact, I'll even say you can patrol. Give me a favorite patrol from something. Here over to. How you can Wait a hit like multiple times. Right 
Targus. Anyways, okay, there, there's some being cool. I need to kind of refresh my memory controls here, but I know it's way like for Wii U controls. You can actually set it up so you can hold down a key and hit multiple points, and they'll patrol all those points back and forth. And again, the big difference between just telling them to go somewhere and patrolling is they'll pace back and forth in that path you set for them. And more importantly, they'll actually go after and nail anything that comes their way. So that's a key thing. Um, let's talk about the different uh, the different classes here we talked about uh, last time. Uh, Starcraft again kind of set set the, themselves apart from other uh, um, RTSs like Command and Conquer and whatnot of the era, because again they had you know, three different factions, but their factions were very unique and very different. We'll start seeing that as we start getting into this a little bit here. Um, but again, the gameplay, the way these guys act for the different classes. Um, really, really, really was a big deal. So with the Terrans, the Terrans' strong point, um, oh god, they're, they're, they're cheap, they're cheap-ish units, but they got some diversity to them. Um, for example, their base unit being their, uh, Marines here, their Marines don't have a lot of energy, but what's nice about them is they can shoot both ground and air, and that's a big division in this game, is you have ground units and you've got air units. So these guys can shoot up both, that makes everybody happy. Their little uh, workers here are very flexible. They can build a lot of different stuff, mine, and all the good stuff there. But they can also repair things. This is critical because part of the game is destroying people's bases. So people can come in and start mucking things up. But they can go over and you actually repair uh, these different items. And that's, that's really helpful. Also, uh, many of the Terran uh, base, base units, like this guy right here, actually have the ability to lift off, meaning this building can actually fly. Which is really, really nice, because especially these kind of buildings you'll notice here, is resources can be limited, and they might run out. So what's nice about this is you can actually say, okay, well, resources are gone. It's definitely go find more resources, and then build them on these buildings, which are kind of expensive. Instead, you can just pick this guy up and fly him over. Now, mind you, they're slower than molasses, but it is a really nice utility to have. More so over, a lot of people uh, use a tactic that when they get attacked, oftentimes by ground units, they just have these buildings lift off, and once they lift off, they're considered error units, and they can't be touched by the ground. So people have many times taken, uh, taken advantage of that. Alright, so let's go ahead and get you uh, working on the whole barracks thing here. Barracks is another unit that can uh, lift off as well, be flown around. Remember, this this is one thing that always kind of annoyed the crap out of me was if there's somebody walking right there when you try to build, it'll stop you from doing that. Um, so nonetheless, so the barracks is, is the basic uh, military unit or basic military training units. This, this is the, basically what you would use to train up your marines. It also trains up some of the more advanced units later, like uh, the fire bats. Uh, I think ghosts come out of there possibly. I can't remember. Uh, it's been a long time. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that's that, that's that, that's kind of the the, the trick to the Marines. Is they've got uh, uh, some pretty good uh, little tricks and abilities there. Another uh, uh, element about the Terrans that's uh, favorable is Terrans have uh, a unique reach when it comes to uh, uh, attack. Um, in fact, they've got the long reach that I'm aware of, and that is actually done or performed by one of their uh, armor units, which is called a siege tank. Now, the siege tanks we'll, we'll see later in the game here. Those things are pretty awesome because they're little tanks. They've got uh, you know standard range, heavy hitting firepower as a little tank that roams around. But then they can be put into no kidding. Um, not only can uh, they do the regular firepower move around, we put them in the siege mode. They actually kind of mount themselves in places they can't move anymore. But once you get into siege mode, they can basically fire volleys that way extend beyond what anything else can do in terms of, uh, uh, of range for shooting. So a lot of people will set these things up as a defensive perimeter because they can basically pound on things and probably more than, more than often than not, nuke anything, kill it well before they can get even close to in range of uh, hurting you. Now these are ground to ground only, so they do have their shortcomings. But that is another thing about this game that I've really enjoyed, is they've done a really good job uh, balancing all the different uh, uh, different units. Every unit's got their strength and their weakness, and this is critical because you know you don't want to have anything be OP or kind of monotone. 
And again, what's nice is because is the fact that these units, from base level up to max, you know, the end game stuff, don't necessarily mirror anything else. Uh, when we start getting into the other uh, other factions here, you'll find very quickly that the personality of like the Zergs, for example, very different from the Terrans. With the Zerg, first of all, they're they're living entities, kind of gross in a way, <laughs> uh, but they can actually uh, uh, grow pretty fast. But they have the certain confinements. So with the Zerg, they actually have to grow on what's called creep. Creep is this weird, slimy growth that spreads out from their buildings. But you can only build on that creep. So you build a building, it starts spreading out the creep, and then you can add more buildings and further spread it. Um, their units are far cheaper, but they have their limitations like anything else. And again, just because of the nature of how they grow, how they, um, uh, the different kind of materials, different types of uh, creatures they have, it's a very different gameplay. So, let's see how we did here. That was a pretty easy one. Again, they do a really good job of kind of stepping you through uh, very slowly. Now, if I really want to, I could have sent my guys out on patrol and probably gone out and find all the little random little broodlings out there and kill them, but I'm just trying to go through this real quick and kind of get familiar with it because we start getting to the more advanced stuff here, so. Pretty easy, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty easy going stuff here. Now, I I really also think just for the sake of, of ease and editing and whatnot, I'm going to go ahead and just keep these to uh, one campaign per episode. Um, so that means for these first few episodes where they're kind of holding your hand and giving you limited resources, limited utilities you can do, etc. These are going to be kind of short-ish episodes just because, as you see here, it doesn't take very long to go through these things. And I could probably bolt them even faster if I wanted to. Um, but I figure if anything more, like I said, I'll go ahead and, and come like that. And as we get starting into the more advanced uh, uh ends of the uh of the of the campaign then you'll start seeing longer and longer episodes so it makes life easy for me and that way you can kind of ease yourself in <laughs> to watching this um so that said uh for now uh as always i really do appreciate your time and and sitting back and uh kicking with me for a little bit um i do have uh intentions to play or insert other games into this series being the uh the retro games series um i don't I, I'm not 100% sure what else I'll bring to it. I've, I've uh, already uh, you know, did a couple episodes of uh, Diablo 2, which I'll probably put, probably put some more of those up, actually, because that's a fun game as well. It's a, it, it's a really good game for just mindlessly meandering and doing stuff and talking and talk about current events, history events, whatever you want. Uh, so I'll definitely be doing some more of that. And uh, uh, I don't know. I... I I, I think if I have the time and money for it, I might pick up the original uh, Unreal and Unreal Tournament uh, games and maybe play a little bit of that. Uh, they, Unreal was a, uh, a great first-person shooter uh, back in the day. Um, it was akin or a competitor to uh, the Quake Saga series the, and the Doom series. Um, but it was the one I got turned on to by friends and what I fell in love with. Um, so I did the original Unreal, the Unreal Tournament, and then, uh, I think, uh, I dropped out a little bit and then picked it back up in Unreal 3. Um, so I may, I may actually pick that up and go ahead and throw that into the, uh, retro gaming list. Um, I've toyed with the idea of, of pulling up, uh, EverQuest and maybe doing a little EverQuest, uh, as part of the, uh, retro series. Uh, again, I, I said this in my Diablo, one of my Diablo episodes. I really don't think I could get back into playing EverQuest on a regular basis. Um, I, I love it. it it's, it, it's got a special place in my heart, but especially compared to how more modern MMOs play now, it's, it's pretty, pretty awful and painful to play <laughs> the original EverQuest. Um, so I don't know if I'm really going to be uh, doing much of that. Uh, I may play... Uh, or maybe just recording on the EverQuest 2 uh, uh, game. I, I well, a little bit of this. I definitely want to play more EverQuest 2. Uh, EverQuest 2, uh, I didn't get it until, until way, way late, until well after uh, it had, had already kind of passed its prime in a sense. 
but I ended up finding out that I really enjoyed it. It had a lot more depth and uh, 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 fun stuff to play with. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I will, I will say that I would uh, that EverQuest Two has better content and gameplay than WoW has ever had, even to current. Um, full statement, I know, all a matter of opinion, of course, but it just it. it it captured me a lot more with the detail, the crafting, the, the quest and whatnot, and it just did a lot better than WoW did. So, um, I definitely do want to pick up EverQuest 2 and play some of that. I'm just trying to decide if I want to run that as its own thing, or if I just want to go ahead and kind of lump it into the retro gaming. It, it really is kind of on that cusp. I, I kind of look at the retro gaming as a look back into my past, my old, the old days of gaming. Um, EverQuest 2, like I said, I never really got into it until after the fact. Even though EverQuest 2 kind of technically was released in that era that I would call, you know, my old stomping grounds. I never played it until much later, so I'll see where we'll go with that. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get into it, maybe we won't. Um, and again, I, I may bring up some old games if I can find ways to find emulators uh, for like Load Runner, the original SimCity, SimAnt, you know, some other fun things like that. Uh, again, I don't think I'm going to do Zork because that's pretty goddamn boring to watch. <laughs> Anyways, guys, as always, I do appreciate you taking out and hanging out with me. Uh, please feel free to uh, provide feedback and me input uh, comments down below here. I always like seeing comments. I love getting a chance to talk back at you. So uh, uh, say hi uh, and, and give me your thoughts. And, of course, as always, if you enjoy what you see here, always feel free to subscribe to this channel. I you know, life life makes it hard for me to say this is going to be a regular thing. I'm not a career YouTuber. This is my hobby. I do this to enjoy myself and hopefully make somebody smile seeing some fun stuff like this. Uh, but I do try to do what I can when I can. But I am a, a dad of uh, currently three and soon to be four kids. <laughs> so family does come up. <laughs> um, and of course, likewise, uh, if you did enjoy this episode, please feel free to leave a like. Uh, it helps me out a lot knowing what you're into, and I can kind of tailor my content to, to try to, to entertain you, so I appreciate that. Alright guys, so for now, stay happy, stay healthy, I'll catch you next time. Ciao.